one very close to me. So close. So close all the time. Um, so close, they live in my home. So close. Our home. Um, they are the second member of Casa de Bimbos. And um, I truly adore them most of the time. And they are a fabulous drag queen and um, general diva. She works the front desk at the LGBT Center when they get down. I hope y'all can imagine what that's like, but there will be a solo show forthcoming. So, um, she is our new, newest, you're the most recent, and um, as self-described tallest member of Heels on Wheels, please welcome to the stage, the lady, Miss Kesa Dilla Alejandro Rodriguez. Buenas noches, buenas noches, everybody. My name is Alejandro Rodriguez, and yes, I live with Heather. That's not how I got the gig. Well, we'll talk about that for the next book. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, first and foremost, thank you, thank you, gracias, gracias, from the bottom of my heart for uh, being here. It's it's fucking special to, you know, be at an ev at any event and to have every single seat filled. Gracias. Gracias. Um, yes, so I am the newest addition to Heels on Wheels, and you know, and I know she's so tall, even though she's Mexican, but you know, that's how it is. That's how it is. That's how life is. Um, so, uh, I, too, started up Heels on Wheels back in 2013, um, and to be completely honest with you, I don't know how Heather found me. Um, you know, at that point, I was living my fantasy up on the Upper East Side. I had a daddy in the Upper East Side. Um, but somehow, through Glenn. That's right, through Glenn. Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. So yes, yeah, so uh, I started performing for Heels on Wheels back in 2013 at um, uh, at a homecoming show at the now defunct The Spectrum. Oh, um, no shade, no shade. Um, you know, baby, like, that, that's where I got my start too, baby. Um, but yes, uh, the point that I want to make is that, you know, Heels on Wheels and Heather and Damien and, uh, you know, all of my sisters, you know, this is where I got um, my chance to perform my work, you know. Um, and it was, um, and it was just special for me because they invited me, baby, and I turned it out. Like, I turned it out in everything I do. Um, and they kept asking me back. And, you know, that's special and that's lovely. <laughs> I hate you, Heather. I hate you, Heather. I really do. I'm going to write an autobiography about her. <laughs> you can do that. Ooh, loca. When she's going through it, I'm just like, uh-huh. What she said? You know, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, Heather, she she is my rock, she is my sister. We have a home together <laughs> that we, you know, we both hold it down. And, and you know, thank you. Now I'm a fucking published author. Yeah! Uh, so yeah, in addition to being a fabulous, fabulous drag queen with fierce hair, you wouldn't know today. I mean, you know, that's the thing that's changed from 2013 to now. But, you know, she, she got older. <laughs> she got older. That's what happened. Yeah. And you can't shame with that. That's what happened for video. Um, so I am going to uh, be reading from uh, a piece that I wrote called The Faggot in the Pink House. <laughs> the house on 802 Silvestre Road was purchased by my parents in 1982. A four-bedroom duplex in the lower valley of El Paso, Texas. My parents, Javier and Patricia, have been the sole proprietors of this duplex. In fact, my mother tells the story that she chose our house 
because it had the biggest lot of all the other four bedroom duplexes on the block. And because of that, she pays a little bit more taxes now. That's what you get, mom. <laughs> My mother, topical, she's so topical, she's so funny. At one point, my mother, father, oldest brother Javier, middle brother Paulo, my tia Lupe, her husband Paco, my tia Silvia, my cousins Xochitl and Alonso, my tia Susana, shared the four bedrooms and two bathrooms. From the time that I was four until after I left for college, my mother decided that she wanted the house to be un color melon. <laughs> Panelo, my mother called it. It was straight up pink. <laughs> I hated it. As a child and through adolescence, I felt that it was a signifier of my sissiness, of my homosexuality, of which darling, you know, like that didn't need any more, you know, a spot like her. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> Still. <laughs> One day during third grade, as I made my way out of the bus, out of the bus, there's that Chicano accent, I still can't get rid of it. Um, one boy yelled to his friend, Mira, ese es el pinche joto de la Casa Rosa. Look, that's the faggot from the pink house. As I exited the bus, I remember those words and the laughter from the other children and it cut down my spine. The most painful part of this memory was that my cousin Oscar was right behind me. And I remember feeling this shame. It's so funny that this shame turned out to be this, huh? <laughs> In the years after I left El Paso, Texas, my father decided that he would renovate the entire house and paint the facade of the house. In the fall of 2012, I had moved from my first apartment in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. You know, I had to leave that apartment. And darling, the stars align and the goddess bless me. Because Heather Ach reached out to me saying she was looking for a roommate. I agreed to stop by and take a look at the place as I got off the G train in Clinton, Washington, darling. <laughs> I surveyed the brownstone neighborhood and, th and thought to myself, all right, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can get used to this. <laughs> As I turned onto Grand Avenue, Heather waited for me at the top of the stoop and to our parlor level apartment. And darling, when I got into this apartment, the living room is completely pink. <laughs> With a disco ball, of course, darling. And it was then that I knew that I had arrived at my new home. And that after all of these years, darling, I'm still the faggot in the pink house. <laughs>